a demo of this where let's fix Cassini. Okay, let's make Cassini so that its UI is always responsive even while it's off downloading these things. All right. So let's go over here. Okay, all this is going to be, all this code we're going to have to do is going to be in our image view controller. We're going to make our image view controller um, so that it is asynchronous, right? That it can load things asynchronously. Before I do that, actually, though, I want to talk one other thing we should be doing here, probably in image view controller. Notice that if someone sets our model, we immediately go off and fetch it. Okay? Now, what if we never appeared on screen? Okay? What if this were something that's in a, going to be in a navigation controller, it got created, but no one ever clicked to cause it to happen on screen, but someone set our model. Then this wouldn't happen in Cassini, this app, but imagine an app where you've got this image MVC and someone sets it. Really, we really wouldn't want to do this fetch because it could be very expensive as we've seen, right? It goes on the network, it's pulling down this thing. If I'm paying for cellular data, it's costing me money, okay, to get that Cassini image. So I probably don't want to do this fetch image unless I'm on screen. If I'm on screen, I definitely want to do this. So here I'm going to say, so how can I tell if I'm on screen? If my view, okay, this is my MVC's view, the top level, if its window is not nil, okay, that's a pretty reliable way to tell, sorry, uh, that you are on screen, right? Because your view, your MVC's view, won't be in a window unless it's on screen. Make sense? We haven't talked about window much. That's that UI window class. I told you that you really never use it, and you don't. You're not going to send any messages to it here. Uh, but whether it's nil or not will tell you whether your view is on screen. Now, what happens, though, if someone sets my image URL, like in a prepare for segue, and then I do go on screen later? Now I have to fetch that image, OK, because now I am going to go on screen. So how can I find out in my view controller lifecycle that now I'm going to go on screen? Which method? Which method in my view controller life so I can remember? It's called, I'll put it down here next to this view did load one. View will appear. Okay, so view will appear is sent to you when you're about to appear on screen. Okay, and we always do super view will appear in all of these view controller life cycles. All right, and here I'm going to say if my image is nil, then I better go fetch it. Okay? So this is one thing I've done to increase my performance a little bit. But it's still not going to stop things from blocking, because as soon as few will appear happens and I'm just about to go on screen, uh, my whole app's going to freeze while I'm off fetching those uh, big, huge images. Right? So I haven't really fixed the problem. I need multi-threading for that. But I just wanted to show you to be a little bit careful about when you fire off an expensive operation. That's what view will appear, appear is for. That's really where you want to fire off things like going out on the network and stuff. Okay. All right, so now let's do our multi-threading and fix this. And we're going to do this here in fetch image. We're going to make it so that fetch image does the actual fetching in another thread. All right, so how are we going to do this? It's pretty simple, actually. Uh, we're just going to take this code right here, which blocks. This blocks the main queue while it goes out on the network to get the contents of this URL. And we're going to use the GCD to put it on a different thread. Okay, so I'm just going to say dispatch async. Okay, remember it t dispatch async takes two arguments, a queue and a block here, a, a closure or a function. Um, do that. So I'm going to put on one of those uh, um, concurrent queues, and I'm going to put it on the one where the user initiated it, but it's not interactive. The user's not in the middle of dragging or something. They initiated it, so it's pretty high priority. And so I get that by saying dispatch get the global queue. And the one I want is QOS underbar class user initiated, this one right here. Okay. This flags is always zero, right? And now I have this block here, so I'm going to double click on that. It's really nice, by the way, you can double click on these things to expand the block. I'm going to use the trailing um, closure syntax here. Okay, for my block. This block, you notice it takes no arguments, returns no arguments. And I'm just going to put all this blocking junk inside here. Okay, so this is going to fix my problem, okay, except that it's probably going to make my app go all strange because I'm going to be trying to do this inside a non main queue, right? Because this queue, this block right here is going to be put on this queue. 
And so I can't do this inside of here. Question? Can you explain the trailing, um, the block, the trailing block where you added the parentheses and what it does? Yeah, OK. Um, so this used to look like this. OK, so this is normal. I'm calling this function right here, OK? Sorry, this function right here. Here's its first argument. See that? Here's its second argument, OK? If the, sec if the last argument of any function is a closure, then you can put it outside of the parentheses. See this dispatch async parentheses starts here? So I just took this parentheses off of here, and I put it over here. OK, so now this is the first argument to this function inside its parentheses. And here's the closure, which is outside the parentheses. OK, you definitely want to get used to that, because we almost always are going to do it that way. And when people design APIs, they almost always put the closure at the end so people can do this. All right, so what am I going to do about this? OK, I need this to be back on the main queue. Well, very simple here. I'm just going to dispatch it back to the main queue. Now, another thing I'm going to do here uh, while I'm kind of at it is uh, let's get this NS data right here. I'm going to assign that to a local variable here called contents of URL. Okay, And then I'm going to put, so that's going to be happening in my other queue. And then I'm going to dispatch async back to the main queue, which I get by dispatch underbar get main queue. Okay, like same exact thing here. Okay, here's the block. I'm going to do the same thing, cl trailing closure notation. And now I'm going to put this inside here. Okay, but now the image data is this thing that I got right there. So that's contents of URL. Okay, now this is happening on the main queue all as well. This image equals UI image, it's a UI kit thing. It's, this is a UI kit thing, by the way, Mo not actually because of the UI image. That is the one UI thing you can do on a different thread. But it's because when we say image equals down here, it's going to do something like image view dot image equals new value. OK, well, that's a UI kit right there. So that has to be on the main thread. So that's why I have to do that. Now, notice we still have an error here. Anyone know what this error is? It's pointing right here. What do you think it wants there? No idea? It wants self there because this is a closure. Okay? This is inside a closure. And remember, whenever we have a closure and we use a property on our object, we need to put self in there to make it clear that we understand this is being captured and kept in the heap. So as long as this closure right here, which it's got this closure inside of it. As long as this is out there fetching, it's going to keep this view controller in the heap. OK? Now, if we wanted to here, we could do uh, the weak self thing here and have weak self question mark. And that way, if the image came back and our MVC had been thrown out of the heap, it would be fine. We would just ignore it. OK, but I'm pressed for time, so I'm not going to do that. But you could hopefully imagine doing that. OK, so everyone see what we've done here? So that's really all we need to do. One thing that it's a little, now I told you that multi-threading, it's pretty easy to read this code and understand what's going on. But you've got to think of the bigger picture of what's happening with multi-threading here. For example, what happens in Cassini if I click on uh, the Cassini, which is a kind of a small image, and then I change my mind and I click on Earth? OK, so Cassini, which is small, comes back. OK, this code is going to put Cassini on screen. But then the Earth is going to come back, and this code is going to put the Earth on top of it. OK, so I'm going to get this flashing thing, Cassini Earth. Or worse, if I clicked Earth first and then clicked Cassini, it would show Cassini. And then later, Earth would come in and it would be showing Earth, even though I clicked on Cassini. OK, do you see the problem? is that I'm firing off these network things in other threads. They're coming back at different times. So really, I want to, if I'm going to be a good programmer here, multi-threaded, I need to check and make sure that the URL that I'm fetching, that's this URL right here, is still equal to the image URL that I asked for. OK? Then I'll do this. If it's not, then maybe I could print something like ignored data returned from URL, and then we'll put the URL in here. 
Okay. And I need self here, of course, because that's inside this closure as well. All right. Everybody got that? So let's go ahead and run, see if this works. So what we should have now is a very responsive UI, okay? All the time, no matter what we click on. So let's try it. Earth, Cassini, see I'm able to click on different things. I can still rotate, okay? Whoops, wrong way around. Uh, and the, um, it's gonna pick whichever the last one that I asked for. It's still fetching right here. It's gonna eventually, hopefully, get one. And, um, Maybe it's even easier to see this maybe. Let's stop this action and go look at an iPhone because you can really see it happening on iPhone because when we click on them, it actually segues and comes back. So watch this. Are we running here? Oops. Uh, no, we want iPhone. Okay, so we go back here. Now I click Cassini, it's loading it, but I can go back. Okay, while this is still loading, I can go back and change my mind because my UI is highly responsive, even though it's loading those things in the background. When they eventually arrive, it's going to put them in the UI, okay? But while they're out there fetching, I can do things like go back in my navigation controller. Make sense? Is See that? Like like out into what happens? What? It's not just start reloading the image each time you so the question, if I click out and then click back in, does it reload the image? And the answer is absolutely, because when I click out, it throws that MVC off, out of the heap. Okay, it's gone. Now, actually, that MVC is not going to immediately leave the heap, because that closure that's doing the fetching is still holding it in the heap. But once that fetch comes back, then it'll leave the heap and the image with it. So yeah, we're, every time we're refetching. Okay? Everybody got that? So see how we built this nice, responsive UI right now? Okay even though it's still taking a long time to fetch things, we can still navigate. 